Nazi. <laughs> okay, so we have the SOAS Major, which I believe this is, no, this is the only model that shows the SOAS Major to my knowledge. Uh, insertion would be, comes right down to the greater, greater trochanter, and it flexes the thigh and the femur trunk. These two both do the same thing. Flex the thigh, which would be flex the thigh and the femur trunk. Okay. So we have the iliacus, which also flexes the thigh and the femur trunk. Insertion would be the iliac crest and the fossa. And I'm sorry, origin. Insertion is the same as that with the lesser trochanter. Okay, am I missing anything? No. Okay, so we have gluteus, minimus, and medius. Can't see the minimus because it's deep, but we have the gluteus medius. You need to know origin, insertion, and action. Origin is origin's gonna just be the ilium outer surface. And they wrap around, insert on the greater trochanter, and they both abduct, abduct, and medially rotate your thigh. Abduct, medially rotate your thigh. <laughs> then we have gluteus maximus. I don't know how this guy goes. This way? Where's the hole? Ah, there we go. Like that? Okay. So we have gluteus maximus. The origin are, it has three different origins. It's going to be the ilium, the sacrum, and the coccyx. Ilium, sacrum, and the coccyx. It inserts on the upper posterior femur and the IT band. And the action is going to be extend, work your glutes, laterally rotate the thigh. Okay. Tensor fascia late. Mm -hmm. uh, this one I believe, right? Tensor fascia latte. And you only need to know the action for this. Which is going to tensor fascia latte. latte. Right here. It goes all the way down. All the way down. Okay? So it's going to flex, abduct, and medially rotate your thigh. So let's see. It's going to flex, abduct, and medially rotate. Abduct. Abduct. So flex, abduct, medially rotate. All right. Piriformis. This one, what? This one, right? Piriformis, to my knowledge. Am I remembering that right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be your piriformis. You need to know just the action. And because this is your butt right here, if it's pooling, your butt's going to go like that. Laterally rotate your thigh. Pulling on your butt, you're laterally rotating. Okay. Obturator intern internus is this tiny little one. So you, here's the piriformis. Skip one, and then you're, there's your obturator internus, and that is obviously associated in the same spot. So it's going to have the same action. It's going to pull and laterally rotate your thigh. Okay. All right, next one, adductor magnus. Adductor magnus. Okay, I have to remember this. The, this one was the magnus, right? Number 18? You can double check me, make sure I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry, adductor. That's right. Adductor magnus is number 14. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Adductor magnus is number 14. You need to know insertion and the action. This inserts on the linea aspera. It goes all the way over Yeah, it goes all the way over here. Uh, you can't really see it very well, so we'll stick with this. Adductor magnus. Okay, and it adducts. Add. And adducts and laterally rotates.
rotates your thigh. Okay. Adductor brevis. Brevis. Was that 13? Does it show on this model? 13 is adductor longus. Yeah, there is no adductor brevis, right? I have a question mark on my. So we have adductor magnus and adductor longus. There is no adductor brevis shown on the model, so I don't think we have to worry about that one. We'll skip the brevis, go straight to the adductor longus. Both of these originate on the linea aspera of the femur, um, and they both adduct and laterally rotate your thigh. Both of them do the same thing. Okay, then you have your pectineus, and we decided it was this teeny tiny one right here, number 12. Can't see very well. And that also adducts, flexes, and laterally rotates your thigh. All right, so this one would pull your thigh in, flex your thigh, and laterally rotate your thigh. Okay? Biceps femoris, we're going to do the long head. Uh, I'm just going in order oh, okay. of this for now. Okay, so biceps femoris, we decided the long head was medial or lateral? Is it 18 or 16? No, no, this is semi. This is biceps femoris. Oh, long that's, head that's number no Okay. Internal. I mean. So biceps femoris long head is number 18A. <laughs> is that lateral? <laughs> this is this is uh, medial and lateral. This is lateral. Biceps. Oh, look, this part right. is medial. And this is your butt. So it's lateral. So it is lateral. Yeah. Okay. So biceps femoris, femoris long head. The origin is going to be your ischial tuberosity. Yeah. So you can see. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, here. So it's going to be your ischial tuberosity, and it inserts all the way down here on your the head of your fibula and the lateral part side of your tibia. Okay, it's going to flex your leg, so it flexes your leg and extends your thigh. <laughs> Sorry, flex leg, extend thigh. Okay, now we'll do the gracilis. Gracilis was in the middle, number 15. That's a big one. The origin is going to be on up here, your pubis symphysis. It's going to come all the way down here, wrap around, and insert on your pes anserinus. And because it originates all the way up here and inserts down here, it's going to act on both the thigh and the leg. So in this case, it's going to adduct the thigh, adduct the thigh, flex the leg. Adduction and flexion. Rectus femoris, right here in the front, number 11A. Okay, 11A. We need to know origin, insertion, and action. Origin is going to be up here. It's going to be on your anterior, inferior iliac spine. Insertion is going to come all the way down here under your patella onto your tibial tuberosity. And because it's acting all, it's originating all the up here and inserting on the bone, it's going to act on both the thigh and the leg. In this case, it's going to flex and laterally rotate your thigh. So flex, laterally rotate your thigh, and it's going to extend your leg. Your leg. Okay. Leg is on the bottom. And you have your sartorius. Our poor sartorius is broken. Okay. So this is your sartorius right here. Longest muscle, this is correct? Longest muscle. Number 10, you need to know origin, insertion, and action. So origin, you'll notice the gracilis runs under it, and that is on the inferior spine. The sartorius runs over the gracilis onto the superior anterior iliac spine. So one is inferior, one is superior. 
runs all the way down, all the way down, loops around onto the pes and serinus of the tibia. So it's going to act on both the thigh and the leg. In this case, it's going to flex and laterally rotate the thigh. So flex, right? Flex the thigh, laterally rotate, and it's going to flex the leg, which is the bottom. Okay, semitendinosus. So we have two muscles in one. On top, you have semitendinosus, just under it, but looks like the same muscle would be semimembranosus. Tendinosus, membranosus. You need to know origin, insertion, and action for this. So you're gonna go up here. There's ischial tuberosity right under there. That's where they're going to originate. And they're gonna loop all the way down here, around to the tibia, and onto the pes and serinus. Okay? So. Both. Both of them? Both. Yep. I, I'm gonna say both. Yes. Both of them, same origin, same insertion. Issue of tuberosity, pes and serinus. They're going to, and, be, and they're gonna act on the thigh and the leg because they're connected to both. So it's gonna flex your thigh, extend your leg. Flex your thigh, extend your leg. And these ones are the group for the hamstrings. The hamstrings are going to be, yeah, all of these. Semimembranosus, sem, semi... Tendinosis. <laughs> semi-tendinosis, semimembranosus, and help me out, I'm having a brain fart. Biceps femoris. Biceps femoris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And speak of the devil, biceps femoris is next, okay? Okay, so this one is um, kind of tough. The, I'm sorry, the short head. Short head for me. Yeah, this was the long head. Biceps femoris short head is in here. You can see that. So it originates on the linea aspera of the femur. And the insertion is going to be on the tibial head. I'm sorry, fibula head and the tibial lateral condyle. So it's the tibia and the fibula. And because it only starts halfway down the thigh, it's not gonna act on the thigh. It has to start from the top if it's gonna act on the thigh. So it inserts down here, it's gonna act on the leg. In this case, it's gonna flex your leg. Flex the leg. Flex the leg, flex the leg. yeah. That's what missing, right? Flex the leg like that. Okay, so we have vastus lateralis. It, it might, they may just not want us to remember that. Well, it, it's not going to work on the thigh because it's only halfway up on the thigh. Yeah. Okay, so vastus lateralis. Vastus are in the front, laterally, right here. We're going to look at number 9, 11, whatever number that is. 11. Okay. So this originates up here on the greater trochanter and the linea aspera. I wonder if we'll get a better, a better idea if I take this off. If you can. Okay. Well, not really. Okay, so it's greater, greater trochanter and linea aspera. And it's going to come down here through the patella or underneath the patella onto the tibial tuberosity. So it's gonna act on both. In this case, they only want you to remember one though. You only have to remember that it extends your leg. It extends your leg. Okay, vastus medialis. We've got vastus medialis and we have vastus intermedius. So we've got vastus lateral, vastus medial, vastus intermedius all in the same place. Fastus medialis also insert or originates on the linea aspera, comes down onto the tibial tuberosity, also extends the leg. Fastus intermedius starts from the, it's not the linea aspera, this is the only one. These two start on the linea aspera, this one starts on just the anterior surface of the femur. Pretty simple, okay? But they all go to the tibial tuberosity through the patella, and they all extend the leg. 
All of them in the front. Okay, gastric menius. We're going to go to the bottom of the leg now. So you got gastric menius or your power muscles or your shins. Not shins, calves. Sorry, you need to know origin, insertion, and action. So this is going to originate on the medial and lateral condyles of the femur. I'm sorry, femur and the medial and lateral condyles. <laughs> okay, and it's gonna come all the way down here, insert onto the calcaneal. And because it inserts on the calcaneal, it's going to point your toes, which is gonna be a plantar flex and it's gonna flex your leg. This is your leg. So, flex. so it gets shorter, your leg is flexed because the angle gets shorter, smaller. Okay, tibialis anterior, right here, tibialis anterior. Origin is just the anterior surface of the tibia. It does also um, merge into the interosseous membrane. Okay, so front of the tibia, interosseous membrane, comes down here, pulls the top of your foot up, which would be a dorsiflex. And then we have extensor halicus longus. Extensor halicus longus. Did we decide that that was um, number 20? That's right, this one's underneath. So. If you're looking at this model, you need to take it apart and flip it over because the extensor hallucis longus is a deep muscle. So it'll come down here onto your hallux. You only need to know the insertion. In this case, it inserts, uh, the origin is the fibula and the interosseous membrane. And the action, of course, if it's pulling up on the top of your foot would be dorsiflexion, it extends your foot, and it's the hal halicus, right? So it extends your hallux. Dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is the top of your foot, yeah. Being flexed. Extensor digitorum longus, which we decided was number 21. Okay, so it's right out front. It's uh, superficial to the halicus longus. You only need to know origin and action. Origin is going to be your tibia lateral condyle. So right on this side of the tibia. And the fibula. And you notice it's in between both bones. So it's on the interosseous membrane as well. And this is going to dorsiflex the foot. It's going to flex the toes, the digits other than the hallux and it's going to evert your foot. So when you pull up on this, the plantar uh, surface of your foot faces inward. That's what it does to your foot. Evert. Show Sorry. it, please. That's invert. Show it, please. Okay. I can do it better with my foot. So actually, I, you can see all, all of my uh, little tendons and, and whatnot here. So when I, when I evert my foot, you can see how my digits right here are lifting up, that's eversion. And my hallux, see my hallux right here? That's inversion. Eversion, inversion. So I have to lift up my digits to evert my foot. Okay, peroneus, longus, and brevis. This is another one, it's two in one. It's right here, right on the lateral side of your leg. And um, so peroneus longus is up top, number 22. Peroneus brevis is going to be number 13 on the bottom. If you need to know. 15 just or 20, 23. 23, right? Oh, 23. See, that that looks like a 13 to me. That's a 2. Okay, like, 23. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a 2. My bad. Okay, so if it's on the side, if these were to shorten, you're going to flex your, your plantar, the bottom of your foot. And you're going to, since it's located on the outside, you're going to lift up the out of uh, the um, lateral side of your foot would be, which would be an E version, E version. All right. And soleus, 
We're gonna go back down here to the gastric medius. We're gonna take off this little section oh, right here. It's the Actually, deeper this, muscle, This one's right? different from the other model. We'll take off the whole thing. So the soleus, you're gonna have your gastric medius right here. Take it off, turn it around, and there's your soleus. It's your soul, it's on the inside. All right, now you need to know origin insertion and action. Origin is going to be just on the posterior proximal surface of the fibula and the, and the tibia. That's it, just the back of the bones. That's a pretty easy one. It's going to insert, same as the ones on the front, it inserts all the way down onto your calcaneal, okay? Action, because it inserts on your calcaneal, if you were to lift up your heel, you're gonna flex the plantar surface of your foot. Flexor halicus longus. <laughs> it's underneath, right? Yeah, take the whole thing Okay. This one's backwards. You would assume that the flexor halicus longus would be closer to the heel, the uh, halicus. It is not. It is opposite on the back. It's on this side, okay? So this is the flexor halicus, flexor digitorum. They're flipped because they crisscross down here, okay? But I don't know who it was that made a really good point. The flexor halicus is thinner down here and the digits is thicker. That's another really good distinguishing feature. So for the flexor halicus longus, you need to know your origin and your insertion. You can actually see this pretty easy right here. This is your fibula right here. It's just on the posterior surface, nothing else. So that's a pretty simple one. If it's coming all the way down here on your hallux, it's gonna obviously flex your hallux because it's a hallux uh, flexor. Uh, it's also going to flex your plantar foot and it's on the inside. So if I were to flex this, the inside of my foot's gonna slightly go up. That's an inversion of the foot. Flexor digitorum longus, right here, number 27. You need to know origin and action. Origin, another simple one, this is on the posterior sur surface of the fibula. Well, this is on the posterior surface of the tibia. Goes all the way down here, onto your digitorum. It's gonna flex your toes, flex your plantar surface of your foot, and just like this one, it's gonna invert your foot. Tibialis posterior. This one's a little tough. If you're looking at it like this, to find the tibialis posterior, you have to take this off, and it's this one right in the center, number 28. Okay, you need to know origin and action. It is between the two bones, so you know it's, gonna, it's gotta be the interosseous membrane, but it's actually touching both bones. So it's on the tibia, fibula, and the interosseous membrane. Okay, the action, if it's coming all the way down here, is gonna be plantar flexion. And you can see it's coming down at a slight angle. So if it's coming down at a slight angle, an inward angle, and it pulls up on this, the inside of your, the medial side of your foot's gonna slightly go up. That's an inversion. And that's it. That was good.